Off-road bumpers found on Amazon are definitely cheaper, but are they worth it? Let's find out together today. I wanna taste the pain. I think I'm seeing all red. Two bullets in the gun, one shot to the head. I need a blank space. Cause everything is a threat. But I never back down, man. I'd rather be dead. I'm making love to fade. Hey, she look better in bed. Now I'll rock this life till I take my last breath. I wanna make a change. I got one life left, so I'm gonna go down. Swing it, don't you forget. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and yeah, I'm wearing a hood because, well, it's winter, it's chilly, and we just got in the shop not too long ago, so I got the heat on now, and it ain't warm. But enough about me, today we're digging back into that Dodge Ram Classic 1500, that's right, it's a 2022 or 3, I can't remember exactly, but we had it in here uh, a month ago or so, and we did a couple LED light upgrades, a few other things, some airbags to it, well, it's back, and today we're talking Amazon bumpers. That's right, off-road bumpers that you buy on Amazon. Uh, the customer opted for these, he did a lot of research on them, found some that looked to be, well, they are very affordable, and um, they had really good ratings. So we're gonna give these Amazon bumpers a shot and let you know how they are, how they fit, and everything about them. There, so you guys will be able to check them out and see what you think for yourself as far as the price point goes. But at first glance, everything in here is packaged, this box here, I think this is the front one weighs 130 something pounds and that's like 110 or something they're, they're heavy um but right up front they are packaged very 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 well um not only in plastic and bubble wrap with this cardboard this blow up styrofoam there's everything in here very 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 well packaging right up front i'm going to say that they were packaged well the box is real thick cardboard not cheap not falling out like some of these things are um, I think what we're going to do, he's got a winch that we're going to install as well on the front bumper because this does have a winch plate. Um, we're going to attack the front first because it's a little more involved. Um, not going to get into a ton of wiring. He, it does come with lights and, and a light bar. He has an existing light bar. We're going to go ahead and wire the new light bar to his existing light bar. But as far as the other lights that come with it go, we're going to do the, another video later because we're going to do like a remote switch pod in this truck. Because he does a lot of like minor overlanding and camping and whatnot. So it's a pretty cool rig. What I'm going to do is go grab this truck. It's a cool looking truck. It's the classic, but it has that a little bit different grill. Uh, a little more aggressive look. It's a nice color. And these bumpers are going to really complement it. At the end of the day, a lot of these bumpers have problems. They rust. The powder coat comes right off them. Um, but what we're going to do is after everything's done and installed, I'm going to go ahead and spray the inside of the bumpers with some oil undercoating to help protect them up here in the northeast, the slush and everything building up behind them. So let's go out and grab the truck. We'll bring it in and start on this rig. There she be, guys. Sorry, it is a little dark. I do have a light on my GoPro now, so you can kind of see a little bit better. But remember this truck with the light bar? I'll get a better view of it in the, in the uh, shop when we get it in the shop. But it's a pretty badass truck set up for camping here. So let me drive this thing in, and I'll give you a little tour around it. All right, guys, there it is. Uh, remember, we had put the light bar on this bumper in this truck here, and it's got that little bit cooler of a grill and a different look on the bumper to begin with. Um, but these bumpers are going to give it even a cooler look. I dig this truck. And the other thing we did out back on this thing last time it was here was the airbags as well as another set of uh, LED lights, which are now going to get removed the existing lights and wired into the lights that are in the bumpers that come with the bumpers. They actually have lights built into them. Um, so like I said, we're going to start on the front. What I'm going to do is probably get everything, the main parts laid out for the bumper on a blanket over here so we can make sure that we have everything. And then we're going to get into removal of the grill. I know that's going to come off and the front bumper, undo our wiring, and then we'll get into the install of the bumper and the winch because I think the winch is in the back. So I'll dig that out as well and show you that. All right, you don't see the whole unboxing, you don't need to, but this is some thick, thick plastic bags. And then inside of that, you've got bubble wrap and more tape on each component. So they did not cheap out on their packaging. I gotta stress that. And you don't see that today. That's that's impressive. All right, guys, here it is. We got it unboxed, eh, boxed, I should say. And some of it is actually assembled. Like the, the center light bar is actually mounted. The recessed um, other auxiliary LED lights already mounted with the grill guard. Um, everything appears to be like a 3 16 steel as far as that goes and yes this is a bolt together bumper this is not something you're going to go out and bounce off the rocks i would not suggest that it is a rugged bumper and like i said this this is heavy um can you use it absolutely but if you wanted something to be a rock bouncer which is not what this is you're going to get a fully welded really heavy duty bumper and you'd be hitting my buddy tj at main off-road for something like that now you can see there's a few 
There's a few dings in it, so I can let the customer know, and we can touch those up for them. That's not a big deal, and it's not uncommon to have this stuff ship with like that. And you saw how well it was packaged. Um, but as you can see, on the main part of the bumper, it comes with a nice rugged winch plate. Again, 316 steel. This is all welded. And then let me flip it back. Excuse my camera. That's the front look right there. And that's going to look pretty killer on the front of this truck. Now, I can already tell you the next upgrade is going to be uh, a level lift in the front of this truck. We've already talked about that, the customer and I. So, um, I think what we'll do is we'll start the assembly of this bumper. Now that we know it's all here, and the removal of this one. Oh boy, is there a pile of hardware? Oh my. But, it is a metric, and it is grade 8 hardware, so that's a good thing. Oh yeah, it comes with shackles too. And, um, savers for the shackles itself. And they quiet it down when they're bouncing off your bumper. Alright guys, this won't be a direct how-to because that would be ridiculous amount of work going on. Um, but basically what they have you do is I go ahead and start assembling this. Is you side the, you uh, bolt the side plates onto the mainframe first using these main holes. And then I believe these overlapping plates cover everything up with some smaller hardware. And then the top plate goes on, then you get your bumper pieces that go on the truck. But let me start with the side plates. I'm just going to get the two in on this side, the bigger bolts. Two in on that side, and then I believe the next step will probably tell us to put the uh, straps with the smaller hardware on, but I'll get back to you on that. Let me get these on. All right, guys, progress. I got both side pieces of the bumper on and the straps that go over those, just like I thought. They do just go over there with the, uh, it's actually 24 bolts that hold it on all the way around. So you get your two main bolts and then all your supporting bolts. The next thing I have you bolt on is a light bar, and that just goes on here and two bolts on the front, so it's four on each side, so eight bolts hold that on. That will go on next. Um, and then, honestly, because I have a bad back, I'm gonna utilize the lift um, to go up and down with the truck, as well as our ATV lift to actually set the bumper on. We'll strap it to that, and we can kind of push the bumper right onto it, so I'm not sitting there trying to hold it with my junk back. Um, so use what you have. Do you need a lift? No, you don't, but we have one. Gonna use it, so we'll get it set up on the lift. Um, get the light bolted on and then get it right here on this thing All right guys, we got the main frame of the bumper um, all bolted together including the lights um, Four of the lower lights in the bumper itself are already in one thing to note though the ones that were already in including these guards right here All the fasteners were a little loose So I had to go back and tighten all those so obviously good job practice you want to do that anyway But just wanted to note if you see fasteners they already installed go back and double check them um, but we got all of our stuff in and tight. It actually looks killer. So now I'm going to take the bumper off the truck here. So you start with the grill. We'll have to unwire our light. Then we'll go to the bumper. We'll set this up on our lift and get this on. Now, I could put the winch on here now. Problem is it's going to add a ton of weight to this bumper. And I already have to lift it. So I may get it onto the stand and then mount the winch in it and deal with the wiring after. I haven't decided on the winch yet. And... I don't know if I showed you the winch in early in the video, but this is a Badland. He picked up a Harbor Freight. I haven't installed one of these yet, but I get really good ratings. It's a 9,500 pound winch. Again, it's not overkill. It's not a massive winch, but it's plenty big for this half ton truck that's just going to do a little overlanding. He's not extreme wheeling. He's not bouncing off rocks and going in heavy mud pits, but occasionally could get off the beaten path a little bit and get himself into a jam. So this is just going to help him out with that. So that won't be a too bad of an install, and we'll get that bolted in with the bumper as we bolt that in. All right, and, and that's worth noting. These guys actually spell out all the hardware you're going to need, as well as the size sockets and ratchets and wrenches and everything that you're going to need. So that's pretty cool. Um, I just want to say that. And the instructions actually walk you through taking off the shroud, the grill, the bumper, all the hardware. It's actually pretty well done. Um, so we'll start with taking this uh, plastic shroud off. Then I'm going to get on to the couple, I think there's four or six fasteners to hold the grill on. And that pops off as well, then we'll get in the bumper. So let me pull that top piece off so we can get to the rest of it. All right, plastic piece is gone, and I got the grill unbolted, and it literally just four 10 millimeters across the top and two recessed eights down here. And you pull the top out, and then the whole grill, I can't do it with one hand, will just come right out of there. It's actually got some weight to it. Um, and if you, I don't know if you noticed that, but this thing's just a little old V6. And the customer's been super happy with it. Fuel mileage, I think in the low 20s. And this thing's an oversized tires on it. You cannot complain about that in a half-ton truck. That is for sure. 
All right, guys, truck's on the lift. I got the headlights out. That is not necessary to do. I got to change some headlight bulbs for him to put some brighter ones in there. Uh, but one thing I noticed, it doesn't say in the directions. There's a plastic shield, at least on this later model classic. And the bumper style is a little different than some of them. So maybe it's just this one. But there's a splash shield on the inside that I'm pretty sure it's got to go because it's tied to the factory bumper. And there's no way it's going to tie to that one. So we got to take these off as well. So I'm going to pop those off. Some of your older classics, I don't think you'll have to do that. So this is gross. Uh, pull off the bumper cover and it's like literally, I don't know if it's a bat or a bird, but it's right there and it's gross. All right guys, kind of starting to notice a few things here. This is a Ram 1500 classic. However, being such a late model, they did a few minor changes, at least on this one to the grill and the bumper. Like I was mentioning earlier, it's a little bit different. However, I'm concerned that bumper is not going to fit right. Um, like these are going to have to go, which is behind the fender flare, which maybe have to get cut. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to try to get this thing set up there and get a better feel for it. But I'm starting to get a little bit concerned, even the grill itself. But um, the old bumper comes off real easy. It's just a... You got those uh, brain flaps here, and then the four, or actually there's only three on each side fasteners right here, but uh, let me get this staged up on the lift here and get a better idea where we're at with how it's gonna fit. All right guys, what we gotta do now is go ahead and put our uh, brackets on here. So yes, these things here are gonna mate right up to the truck itself, but we gotta go ahead and get them bolted on like so. There's three bolts that hold it on there. So we'll put one on each side, we'll leave them loose, we'll get it on our lift here, and set it up in the truck and see how this is all gonna fit. All right, there it is, guys. Our Harbor Freight motorcycle jack comes in so handy when it comes to uh, installing bumpers. There's so many other things. The forklift not handy, the tractor couldn't get it in here and maneuver it around. This here, boom, spin it around. We're gonna fit it right up to the vehicle itself. That is a handy tool and a back saver, especially if you're working by yourself. All right, so my suspicion was right. Although this is a classic and the bumper will bolt on, <clears throat> there's a couple things that are gonna have to be trimmed if he wants to use this bumper. Um, because of this was a little bit different, we had to take these off under the headlights, which are part of that factory on the standard classic. Also, if you notice how the bumper goes up right here, this line right here, we will have to cut this fender flare all the way back to here. Basically this line, and it should line up pretty much perfect and follow that headlight contour um so that's got to be done now the grill itself that's not the standard classic grill although a classic truck <sighs> it's a way cooler grill i like it however this bumper because of how the grill is on the standard classic hits right here so if he wants to use this i got a lot of trimming and cutting to do to get this thing to fit um if not he could swap this out for a standard um ram classic grill or uh don't use the bumper which i'm sure he, that's not the option he's going to take but uh that kind of sucks so i gotta call into the customer we'll wait and see what he says so we can proceed with something here all right guys there it is i talked to the customer and we're actually going to be trimming uh the grill back to get this thing to slide up in there i think it'll fit we talked to him worst case scenario he's going to go to a, just a standard classic grill and then the same thing on the sides here with the fender flares, we'll trim those back. But we're gonna do the grill first and start pushing this back and get it to where we need it to make sure that it is in fact gonna be there when we cut it. So what I'll do now is we'll pull the bumper back away and we'll start trimming on that grill. And it's just gonna be a trial and error thing until we get it to where I want it so it'll look good. Um, gonna add some time to the job, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So we'll get through it. All right, the answer is yes, it will fit with some trimming. And actually it's not horrible. Um, it's, the bumper's not really lined up right now, but it's just kind of sitting here. But that will fit, so and that'll look way better than the standard classic grill. And as you can see, fitting around the headlight here, we are going to trim back right on that line right there. So we've already trimmed this one. We'll clean that up, sand it down, trim that up. Then we can bolt it on. Nothing to see here. Just me uh, cutting up a 2022 truck. Alright guys, we got our headlights 
put back in we got our grill snapped back in not screwed down and we'll go ahead and fit the bumper up there and we've got the brackets pretty darn close uh to get the bolts in now and then i see this splash guard hanging down below the bumper instead of cutting it i think we'll heat it with a heat gun at the end here and kind of fold it up in here so it doesn't show it still gives them some protection all right guys i got the bumper lined up pretty darn good we use the shim here to keep our uh our gaps consistent and then uh, i got a couple of bolts tightened on here so what we'll do now is we'll lower this lift get that out of here i'll finish tightening everything up and then we can throw that winch on there and the front will be done oh and it's a warlock edition i could not remember what it was but it's still classic but it's the warlock edition so it will fit with some modification all right i got the bumper all tightened down i actually reconnected the light bar with the wiring that was already here so that makes it way easier for us but as far as this light and this light goes we're going to be doing those at a future date to like a remote switch set up on the truck but for today it'll just be um this one wired up to the way he has it now um the next step's gonna be throwing the winch in i'm gonna grab a bite to eat and we'll do that all right here it is our badland 9500 winch this comes from harbor freight i believe and i'm hoping that it just kind of mounts up in here in these holes where it should i hope so i'm gonna get the box open and get the main unit out and see how that actually is gonna fit fingers crossed it actually fits all right, here it is. This is bad boy. There's some beefy-ass cable on this thing. These things are pretty impressive winches. I'm not even sure what he paid for this, but all in all, it's pretty impressive. Um, here's a control box that most of the top. That's going to be the limiting factor whether or not that fits in here. Um, but I think the winch is going to fit fine. So I'll throw that in there, and as long as it fits, we'll take it back out and get the uh, winch to the control box itself wired up. I'm going to have to do a lift in the front of this. I don't know what it weighs. But it's got to weigh. This has got to weigh 60 pounds or less. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely not going to fit with a control box on it. But that's okay. I think the holes will line up. And we could mount the control box elsewhere, I think. So the winch itself sitting in there right now. That doesn't fit too badly, honestly. The control box itself, so basically, it just bolts to that up and out of the way, but it's just the control box, you could mount wherever, and it would connect to here. So it can't go far, um, but it doesn't need to be anything structural, so I'm sure we can find a place to hide the control box. I don't think it's going to tuck up in there too well. Um, so let me do that there and get this winch actually bolted on. All right. You know how I said you didn't need to worry about mounting this, we could mount it up underneath? I was wrong, because this actually has the port for the remote. Um, so I believe right here behind the light on this flat surface, we'll get this thing mounted up here behind this light. And that won't look too bad, and it'll give them really easy access. And these wires should still route down through the grill there and connect to the motor. So I will have to pop the grill back out. I mounted where it was going. It's just sitting in there right now anyway, so we'll take that back out and get that mounted, and then the wires run down to the motor. Alrighty, we got our mounting spot all figured out, and I'm drilling and tapping the mounting hole so this will actually get screwed right into place like that. Easy access for the remote, and the wires are going to cut a little recess in the grill there. So I'll finish that up, then we finish up the wiring on this, and the front is done. Alright, wiring on a winch is really straightforward. They're literally color coded. You see there's a red, yellow, and black. Then there's a red, yellow, and black. The long red is going to go back to a disconnect switch where you're going to mount up there close to the battery and the other end to the battery. And then an additional ground which goes on this side of the motor all the way back or to a good ground. I'm not sure I can look at the directions or whether it's the battery. Let's see. That goes back. Yeah, it shows it goes back all the way to the battery. So the the, the long red, long black go all the way back to the battery, but everything else is right there. It's really straightforward. All right, I got our underside wiring figured out, and I added a piece of chafing right here where the wires may, may come in contact with the edge of the bumper there. Just for extra protection, we cut a recess out of the grill here where the wires are going to go through. We're going to route the power wire up here someplace around here for that uh, disconnect switch. The other end goes to the battery, and then we got a ground. I don't think the ground they give us is long enough, so we're going to have to find a good chassis ground. 
All right, got our winch all connected up here, negative and positive. It was able to reach. It was long enough to the negative uh, cable. And then our, as far as our disconnect switch for the winch, um, I just put the uh, cover on and we're going to Velcro it to the top of the fuse box here. Uh, it'll be out of the way of the hood and it'll also um, allow easy access for him to do that. And then the winch is almost done. We're going to put the roller fairy lead on, a hook on, a couple of D-rings on the front, and then we move to the back. Got our Velcro here. This stuff is so sticky. We'll put it on here and try to center as best as I can. I think I got it. And that way they can still take it off there. You got to get to the fuse box, but it's still readily accessible as well. Um, so let's finish up this bumper. All right, I think we're ready to test this baby and make sure it does work. So go ahead and pull that plug off, plug this in, and give her a little in-out action. Then the front is done. All right, a little in-out action. This thing's actually quite fast, to be honest with you. You can free spool it as well, but it's a big contact today, you can tell. What I'll do is I'm just going to loop it over here. For him, and he can do what he wants with it. I think so. We'll leave it like that. Not bad. One thing I'll have to go over with him is where he wants the front license plate, or if he wants a front license plate. Uh, we will have to figure that part out. Um, now it's on to the back. So this factory bumper, we're going to go ahead and take this off. I'm hoping the aftermarket one clears that hitch. It should. Um, we got lights mounted to this one we're going to take off as well. However, I'm not sure how the trailer wiring is going to work out with that rear bumper. So I don't know if they thought of that from the factory. It'd be cool if they did. I guess we'll find out in a minute. All right, guys. Here's the rear bumper. Everything all taken out of the packaging. And as you can see, you've got four more lights in the back of this thing. We're probably only going to wire up these two on beside the license plates here for now. Because again, he'll be able to put these other two on a switch or, or can join them into this one circuit so they all four come on. I'm not sure exactly how he wants to wire those up there. Um, but again, we're going to bolt this up together. Those straps go on and after. The D-rings will pre-wire up the two lights so it's just one connector in the back of the truck. Oh yeah, and everything looks to be eighth inch steel. And they did think of the trailer wiring. That is freaking awesome, as well as the license plate. So, cool, cool. All right, the rear bumper is fully assembled. It's just three pieces, the two sides and the center. But you do have to put the tow hooks on. And there's a whole ton of fasteners on these things to uh, go ahead and bolt together. Uh, it's all there. Uh, my only complaint about the fasteners is they're not, like, real high-quality fasteners. I'm afraid they'll start to rust fairly quickly, but... Um, the bumper itself, again, the fit and finish is there. It's decent. The thing goes together really well for an Amazon um, purchase. You know what I mean? You get leery on the cost and everything else, but you know what? It's it's a badass looking bumper too. I mean, it's pretty freaking rad. Um, but it's all together. Like I said, I'm just going to wire up these center lights to the existing circuit we have now. Then he can decide what he wants to do for the other ones when we go ahead and put the remote switch in. Um, so we'll go ahead and take the rear stock bumper off. We did talk about where we mount the front license plate and I think we're just going to mount it <laughs> underneath here flat. So technically it has a front plate, just not like, not the way it should be. All right. One thing I just noticed on the truck itself is, oh, backup sensors. So he's going to, I don't know. We got to figure that out. We got to disable those or is it, I didn't see a spot in the other bumper for him. Um, not that we couldn't put them in, but I gotta see if they address that in the directions. I didn't read that far ahead yet. Uh, I was just kind of looking at the bumper itself. Unplug the sensor so it'll come with the bumper. Unplug the trailer hitch. Took out the uh, license plate lights just so we can separate everything itself. Um, and oh, there's two bolts here, and there's two bolts behind the license plate there. We got airbags in this truck that we installed in another episode. So we got to undo these two little fittings here as well so we can push those those through as well. All right, not in the directions. However, there's four parking sensors on this harness. And I found it has little plastic plugs in it, but there is four holes. There's another one. What did I see? Oh, right there. Right there. And another one on the other side. So there is provision. So we can go ahead and put these park sensors back in this bumper, which is awesome. I already got the trailer plug in. It fits up really, really, really nice. Um, one of the one of the two license plate lights was uh, broken, 
in the package, which sucks. Um, the LED is like literally ripped right off. But I think I can solder that back on and get this thing back up and going for them. We'll try that. Um, if not, I'll have to get another one. But all in all, the bumper's off on the back completely. Gone. Comes off real easy and it's way lighter than this aftermarket one. Um, so we're ready to go ahead and set it on here after we... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to put the... Um, park sensors in that bumper and get most of that done so the less wiring I got to do back here I will have to wire up two of those auxiliary lights on onto that that's my existing from the last bumper we had on here as well as the airbag fittings are going to go through the license plate holes as well so um we're just about ready to put it on oh and I got reinforcements Steve just showed up so for one as soon as he sees this my tool area he's gonna be pissed but two perfect timing to pick up this bumper all right guys, Steve's here. And if you're gonna use the sensors, we just ran into a issue. Um, they did put the holes in, two problems. The holes are not big enough. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. So we gotta open up the size of the hole in order to fit the factory looking clip in there. And it'll be nice when it's done, but I can open those up, then I'll have to touch up the paint. And where the sensors are, where they mounted them, the harness isn't long enough. So your outside uh, sensors, you gotta extend this about 18 to 24 inches on each side. So that's a heads up. It definitely adds more time to the project. The other option is, if you didn't want to use the sensors, you'd leave it plugged into your main harness, coil it up underneath the truck, and then just shut the switch off on the dash. So if you were off-roading and stuff and you didn't care about the sensors or whatever, you could go without them. Um, but we're gonna do the sensors. The customer opted to have the sensors in. So that's what we're up to now. All right, guys, we got all of our holes enlarged now and ready for the fittings. But before we put those in, I'm going to go ahead and use touch-up paint and let that dry overnight before we even put the grommets in. Steve's over here finishing up extending the harness, so we'll be able to wire that harness in as well. And what I wanted to show you was look at this bad boy drill. This half-inch truck chuck drill was my grandfather's, and I still use it today. And this thing will literally snap your wrist if you're not holding on to it. So that's a badass drill. All right, park sensing wires are extended, thanks to Steve. So now we can fit the outer sensors on the outer corners and then reach all the way to the back sensors right here. So what we're going to do now is, honestly, it's just four bolts that bolt this bumper itself on, which is a little scary. Um, but we're going to go ahead and set the bumper on. So I got Steve here before I call it a night and loosely put the bolts on. Then I'll get into the wiring and put the sensors on and everything else. All right, guys, it's the next morning. And now we got the bumper on. I got the grommets for the park sensors all in and we extended that harness last night so we just got to loop that harness through and we're in the process of wiring these lights back up to the original um, harness that we had here for his other lights. These ones will get wired at a later date, um, I don't know, it could be tied to his reverse, that's kind of what I think I would do, um, but anyway I just want to kind of show you the electrical connection uh, or connectors that I use here. Um, these are solder connectors. And basically it's heat shrink on both sides with a strip of solder in the middle. And it works great, honestly. You get a weather tight seal and a soldered connection. You can't ask for better than that. You just gotta be careful and get used to heating them um, so you don't blow through or overcook them. Um, but they work really well, I just wanted to mention that. Oh yeah, they work, they're bright. I don't know if you can even see this, but the strands on their license plate light are so so tiny. I don't think I've ever even worked with something that small. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to suck. All right, guys. Everything's wired up except these lights here. Wired up, zip tied up out of the way. Now I'm going to tighten the four fasteners that hold this bumper on. That's it, and they're really easy to get to. Um, but just make sure that you're level between the tailgate and the bumper all the way across. Because the last thing you want to be is to think you're done, and then it's crooked. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that tightened down. And then we pop our sensors in, our license plate on, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be oil undercoating the inside of these bumpers because it's going to help prolong um, the coating on it and keep some of that rust off from it. So we're just going to kind of give it a spray on the front and rear because up here in New England, it's just road salt and everything else eats these things up. So uh, that'll be the last step and then we're done. All right, guys. She is done. Completely wired up. Everything's wired. Everything's done. Everything's tucked away, including the sensors. We had to extend the harness. Um, everything's up there, zip tied, sealed, weather tight, ready to go. 
So I think that's it. I just gotta put it down, make sure everything's there. And we'll kinda go over what my thoughts were on it. All right guys, here's my thoughts on the bumpers from Amazon. Now these are BJ bumpers. I'm gonna put the link to these bumpers in the description. Front and rear bumpers with LEDs, these are both together, um, about eight to three sixteenths inch steel, depending on where and the winch plate and everything else. Um, they are powder coated. Um, at a price point around $1,400 for front and rear to completely change the look of your vehicle, I'd give it, uh, out of five stars, I'd give this thing four, four and a half. Um, it wasn't a bad job. Um, everything seemed to fit pretty decent. Uh, a big complaint was the, the fasteners they use on a lot of this stuff you find on Amazon, it, they aren't great. And one, they rust too. Sometimes you just never find the size socket you need. It's not a 17, it's not an 18, it's not a standard, what is it? Um, but the lighting, uh, I guess time will tell to see how uh, long they last. Um, but they're all replaceable. They're a standard LED light, so it's not like it's that hard to replace it. Um, I am gonna go ahead and oil undercoat behind the bumpers at a later date um, because of the um, epoxy and stuff we use for the park sensors amounts. I gotta let that cure up so at a later date we'll do that. Um, that brings me to my next point. Park centers were not addressed in the, in the directions at all for the classic trucks. Um, however, there are little ports in the bumper, four of them, but they're too small for your factory sensors. So we had to extend the harness and open the ports up and then do all the touch-up paint um, in order to use. He still wanted to utilize his park sensor, so we were able to do that. So all in all, they're a good product, I, and the look is fantastic. Um, we're going to be wiring up the rest of these lights to a remote switch pot pod in a later date as well as putting a level lift kit in the front of this thing and he just ordered a badass like rv camper overlanding thing for the back of it um so you're gonna see more of this rig and i like it i love this truck and every time i work on it it's more and more it's cool and it's simple so let's back it outside and take a walk around and see what it looks like oh yeah this thing is killer looking look at you see almost this entire front tire now that is badass Got the LED light bar on in the front. Side view there. This is a nice looking bumper. Very nice looking bumper. And like I said, at the price point, you can't go wrong. Uh, as you can see, it does have a rake to it. We added 200, 250 pounds to the front of this thing. Um, so we are gonna do a level kit in the front. We've already done airbags in the rear, so he's already got that covered with the airbags. Um, here's the back bumper. And we get the lights on back there as well to show you. And we're gonna wire up the other two at a later date. It's killer. This thing looks absolutely awesome. Wicked cool. All right guys, that's gonna bring us to the end of this episode where we took this Dodge Ram Classic and spiced it up with a couple of Amazon off-road bumpers complete with LED lighting. And honestly, I'm happy with them. And at the price point, you cannot beat it. So. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Take care, guys. Scott with Flippin' Customized.